Hey everybody, welcome to Coog on the Clock. I'm Von Druin. And I'm Derek Joseph. We've got a lot to talk about today, including an NHL primer as the Seattle Kraken look to shake things up this year. And Clay Thompson's long-awaited return to the Golden State Warriors when the NBA season tips off next week. We're also going to discuss how Geno Smith can keep the Hawks afloat during Russell's first ever absence. And with the MLB season coming to a close, we'll go in depth with predictions for each league's hardware and talk about some of the first round excitement that's taking place in the playoffs. With that being said, let's hop on our first topic with Coog on the clock. All right, so today we are going to be discussing our first topic, the Seattle Kraken, and I cannot be more excited for this. The Seattle Kraken, a brand new NHL franchise, like we're, we're going to get the, like the best treatment ever with the, like with the new stadium and, and new team and new franchise. We're going to start new traditions. I can't wait. Everything's new and everything's fresh. I can't wait to, I can't wait to just get, get right into these guys. <laughs> yeah, man, a, a clean slate. A uh, whole new team, um, you know, and a whole city full of new fans ready to cheer on this Kraken squad. Uh, a lot of them unfamiliar with hockey beforehand, but they're going to get on these guys really quickly because I think this is going to be an exciting team, man. Yeah, I've been trying to learn a lot about the, about the Kraken organization and the guys we've picked up, and one guy that really – stands out to me is Brandon Tanev. This guy is, is just fun to watch. He's super, like, he's super fast and he gets yep. a lot of good hits in there. Um, he plays forward, which is a really exciting position. Like, I, I'm just so excited for, the, for this. I can't even contain myself, man. Yeah, they're gonna be calling his name a lot. Um, I know maybe you've seen the meme of him with the crazy eyes. He has the best uh, player picture, I think, in the league. And that also gets me really excited about him, not gonna lie. So as a new hockey fan, what, do you, what are you most excited about from this new Seattle Kraken team? Uh, I'm really trying to see how they gel. Um, you know, these guys have obviously never played with each other before. Um, and, you know, just as a new NHL fan, I want to see them, you know, just hit the ice hard from the jump uh, with their first games against some really good opponents. Uh, I want to see them scoring a lot, uh, you know, that front line which I just learned is a term, uh, is going to be really important uh, to start this season off. Uh, one guy that I have my eye on is Yanni Gord. Uh, he plays center, and he's going to be a strong force for us. Uh, he's starting the season off uh, injured. He might be on the injured list. Uh, we'll see by game time. But um, you know he's going to be really special, I think. Uh, he was a two-time champ in Tampa Bay, so I want some of that winning energy brought here. And hopefully we can create that winning tradition like – uh, the Seahawks have had in the past. Yeah, I'm personally really excited to see how the new Kraken fans are going to react to this team. We got a brand new stadium and a brand new team that I couldn't be happier. This is going to be just a, a wonderful time. And yeah. now, look, now that brings us to our next topic, the Seattle Seahawks. Yeah, man. Um, so it's a rough time to be a Hawks fan. I'll tell you that much. Um, Russell's injury, you know, he might be out four to eight weeks. Um, and, you know, there's a lot of skepticism about how the team's going to do in his absence, how they were doing with his uh, presence in the team is um, debatable. But, you know, I'm really excited to see what Geno can do. Geno Smith, um, we know what he's done in New York. Not a lot, but it was the Jets, and you can't blame all of that on him. Uh, team structure has a lot to do with that, coaching as well. Um, but Gino himself, I mean, he's a talented player. There's a reason he was picked uh, 36th overall, I believe. Um, he has a career 57.9 completion percentage with 30 touchdowns, 37 picks. Um, and his last full game action came uh, as a backup on the Giants, uh, playing the Raiders. And he did uh, 21 of 34 for 212 yards and a touchdown. So, I mean, if we can get anything close to that, like, I feel pretty good about our chances with them, honestly. Yeah, I, th I just think it's a really interesting fact that Russell Wilson has never missed a start in his career. So Geno Smith has had the job that I think any backup quarterback would ever wish for. You know, yep. it's for years it's just been this whole, uh, you know, like I just get to sit on the bench and get paid for it and just get, to, get to look through the playbook and – and give him, give Russell maybe some advice, but now he actually has to be the guy. He needs to step up, and I think he actually has a chance to get us some wins with the, with the two struggling teams we have coming up. Like we got Pittsburgh coming up; they just had a pretty good, a pretty good showing. Big Ben was looking a little bit like his old self in his last game, and then 
We have uh, New Orleans coming up too, and their their team has been struggling. They can't pick a quarterback, it seems like, and they got a quarterback who's like a wide receiver too, and it's kind of weird. Yeah. Yeah. But I'm just really I'm really interested to see what he's going to be able to do for us. And I think depending on how we do in those games coming up, uh, I think we're going to be able to. That will be that will be the determining factor for whether or not we we start Russell Wilson in after four weeks or through eight weeks. Because I feel like if we're losing right. a lot of those games, we're going to take our time bringing Russell back. But if we're winning, we might just want st- to like stick him back in there as as our number one guy. Right. Um, and, you know, the only true uh, solid defense we're going to be playing is possibly New Orleans. But they still lack a, you know, a formidable pass rush. Uh, that it can't get a lot of turnovers. And then um, after that game is Jacksonville, which, you know, Jacksonville. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and, um, and then after that, we got a bye week uh, before playing the Packers. So, you know, if worse comes to worse, uh, we can't get Russell back over this next four or five weeks, um, if not longer. I mean, I think Geno can be serviceable. I think the problem with the Hawks lands a lot more with the defense, though. And that sound means that it's time for our next topic. Sounds good. All right. And we got the... We got the NBA regular season coming up and the return of a beloved Cougar here at WSU, Clay Thompson coming back to the Golden State Warriors after after a horrible luck with injuries. He tore his ACL in the playoffs the last time he played and then right before last year he tore his Achilles and he just couldn't come back. And now he's finally going to be making his return. From what I'm hearing, it's going to be just kind of a, a day-to-day. They're going to just play by ear and – but the return of Klay Thompson is going to be just a great thing for the NBA, I think. Yeah, I mean, how can you not love this guy? Like, he's just a, he's a funny, charismatic dude who puts in the work, um, and he's been an integral part of NBA history with some of the best teams ever on the, on the Warriors, uh, him and Steph being the, the splash bros. I mean, I think the NBA is a lot better with him in it. Yeah. Um, and it's just uh, it's really good to see him back, man. All that hard work finally paying off. Well, and I think with with the addition of Klay Thompson coming back, like you can't really count the Warriors out of being of being contenders. Maybe it's a maybe it's a stretch, but I'm saying this as a Warriors fan that I I can see them winning a lot of games this year, and it'll be good. Um, Steve Kerr did his best Max Kellerman impression and just said, I want Iguodala to come back. <laughs> and so he got him back. He got a, he got a good veteran back with that will give him great leadership. He's not what he used to be athletically, but what he does bring is a lot of value in the leadership aspect of that. And then you got guys like Draymond Green, who's been a leader on that team forever, and Steph Curry. He's Steph Curry. I mean, how yeah. can he not? <laughs> yeah, and don't forget about uh, new additions, Otto Porter and Avery Bradley. I mean – those are solid dudes, um, and they can contribute night in and night out, uh, especially, I think, Avery Bradley, given Clay the time off to come back slower, um, will be great. And then another guy I want to point out on the Warriors is Juan Toscano-Anderson. I think he's a sleeper pick to have a breakout year. Uh, he's a hometown kid, uh, born and raised around Oakland. Uh, he had a rough childhood, always watched the Warriors growing up, and after playing in Mexico for a couple years, um, got a chance with the Warriors, and I think he's primed for a really good year off the bench. Well, and with the – I think we got a little bit of time here. Who do you think will win the championship this year? <sighs> Dude, um, <laughs> I mean, there's, there's the obvious, the Lakers and Nets. I mean, I want to put up there. Um, I was huge on the Nets last year, and I still am very big on the Nets. See what happens with Kyrie, of course. But um, I'm really liking the Heat this year, man. Really? Um, yeah, they got Markeith Morris now with P.J. Tucker uh, from the Bucks, uh, and Kyle Lowry, bro. Kyle Lowry. I mean, that's a playmaker. Um, <laughs> and him with uh, Jimmy Butler um, and, of course, Bam Adebayo, like, that's a really formidable team. Yeah. Uh, I think they're going to be solid all the way around. Good bench, obviously great coaching with Spolstra. Um, that's my pick. Real quick, who's your pick? <laughs> um, don't sleep on the Chicago Bulls this year. All right. All right. That'll bring us to our next topic. Um, yeah. So I want to talk a little bit about the MLB award season. Um, there, there's a lot of uh, a lot of good picks for um, the different awards. I want to really get into the MVP voting because it's really interesting this year. Obviously, in the American League, you have this weird dichotomy of old versus new. You got Vlad, uh, Vladimir Guerrero Jr. 
um, classic big league slugger. Um, he's solid at first base, but I mean, he's up here to hit. He finally broke through this year, um, led the league in most offensive categories. Um, yeah, I mean, he was just solid day in, day out in that lineup, in that really good Blue Jays uh, lineup, uh, hitting in front of or behind Marcus Simeon as well, who's probably the next best MVP candidate. But I think no doubt it goes to Shohei Otani, man. Um, yes. <laughs> you talk about a, a healthy slash line, but 46 bombs, 100 ribbies, um, and then uh, his speed game, bro, eight triples, uh, first in the league, 26 stolen bases, good for fifth. Um, and on baseball reference, he's got a power speed number of 33.2, which is first by a large margin. Um, and that's before talking about his pitching. And I think, yeah, you, you mentioned the pitching. The, the thing you need to, to take into account with all of that, too, is he did all of that even, even as a starting pitcher, too. They were playing him as a starting pitcher and still putting him in the lineup. That is incredible. That's something we haven't seen since the Babe Ruth days. And I don't even yep. think comparing Shohei Otani to Babe Ruth is anywhere near fair because I think Shohei would have mopped the floor with him. Absolutely. Uh, and it's just the, what Shohei Otani is doing is nothing like we've ever seen in baseball history. I've, it's been so much fun to watch. And as, even as a Mariners fan, the Angels are our rivals. But even like, I, ha I could do nothing but appreciate what he's brought to this league and what he's done for it. Yeah, I mean, I'm still a little salty we didn't sign him, uh, personally. But, yes. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's pretty incredible to watch. And I think you have to reward that uh, with an MVP trophy. Um, his 9.0 war is far and away the best in the league. Um, and, I mean, yeah, I mean, all-star level pitching and hitting, how, you, how can you get more valuable than that, you know? Um, also, National League, uh, less exciting but much more uh, close contested. I got Juan Soto winning over Bryce Harper. It's really close. They flip-flop on a lot of stats, um, leading the stats. Uh, Tatis is behind them, but I don't think he has a chance this no. year. I think he has one in his future, though. Yes. Um, hotly contested Cy Young voting. Uh, I got Robbie Ray over Garrett Cole in the American League. Uh, they're one and two in most stats, but Ray is usually bumping him in that. In the National League, it's crazy, bro. Uh, I got I – got, Oh, dang. Okay. Um, real quick, uh, forget the other ones. Comeback player of the year, Mitch Hanniger, hands down. Trey yes. Mancini, good job fighting cancer, man. I'm really proud of you, but Mitch had such a better year. Um, you just have to give it to him. Yes. So, um, yeah, right. and then on MLB, what do you got about the, the playoffs, man? Um, so the the MLB playoffs, I am just really excited about what the, about what's going on with it this year. Um, you got a bunch of favorites and a bunch of a bunch of people, a bunch of players that people hate too. Yep. So you got like the Houston Astros versus the versus the White Sox right now, and that series is really is really intense. Mm -hmm. And then you got the Tampa Bay Rays versus the Boston Red Sox. You got a Rosa Reina stealing home and then hitting a dinger right afterwards. You can't mm. ask for anything more than that. Like all this exciting stuff in the playoffs has just been incredible it's been great to watch yeah I think this is one of those years that we're going to start seeing uh, uh, rivalries being built um, with these really closely contested series um, I think with the White Sox and Astros we got a whole new beef uh, brewing with that one uh, with some allegations going on both sides uh, and big offensive outputs around the league uh, you know and the, and the Rays I mean they're probably the most exciting for me to watch uh, Dodgers, I think, have the best pitching. Uh, but what would your what would be your like ideal World Series matchup at this point? My ideal World Series matchup is between the the Tampa Bay Rays and the Atlanta Braves, just because that's my second favorite baseball team. I I want to see those guys in there. Atlanta suffered enough. I would like to see them enjoy a World Series and let let their fans get to see that. <laughs> that's fair. Um, as much as I love seeing the Dodgers play and would love Albert Pujols to get another ring. Personally, um, I really want to see the Brewers take on the Rays in the World Series. I think they have like the same kind of mindset uh, with playing. They're really strong defensively, have um, uh, a new style of, of pitching, uh, coaching at least, uh, and really talented young guys all around the diamond, and a lot of dudes on both teams that used to be Mariners. So you got to yep. root for them like that. Yep, exactly.
Um, but yeah, it's, a, it's an exciting time, man. Um, you know, we'll see how it shakes out, but uh, yeah, yeah, it's it's been fun so far. That's for that's real, for sure. Real quick, who do you think is gonna win it all? Uh, I kind of think the Dodgers. Honestly, I, I got my I mean, money on the Rays. Let's let's let them do that. I'll I'll yeah, I can see that. All right, and I think that that will conclude this episode of Coog on the Clock. Thank you all for watching, and as always, go Cougs.